Okay, thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. I think I have a project here that's going to be uh, pretty fun, and it'll, I don't know, in theory, we'll see what it is in application. I think in theory it's going to be the, uh, I don't know, one of the fastest projects you can possibly do, um, you know, with a, a certain degree of dynamic results here, okay? I have a pre-folded half-page card right here, so it goes down to four and a quarter by five and a half right here. And I have a piece of silver foil here, and what we're going to do is we're going to adhere this to this um, bottom portion here. And then, for the mirrored portion up top, what we're going to do is we're going to apply this um, cloud photo here, and that's going to remove a lot of the uh, kind of the work for uh, load for us in creating this kind of mirrored um, lakeside uh, or a lake impression in here, okay? Lake reflection, I should say. Okay, now here's the problem here. This photograph right here is a four by six, so I've already trimmed off the sides to make it five and a quarter, but we're going to have this extra little bit up here. So this isn't going to be quite a four and a quarter by five and a half quarter page, because I'm going to have to take off a quarter page up here. So what we'll do is we'll get these two pieces um, glued down here and then what I'll do is I will remove about a quarter inch up here okay just so you know it matches up and we don't have that excess um, bit up there what I you know I need to do sometimes is get um, some five by sevens of uh, my photo prints which uh, you know would uh, match up with a lot of the 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 pieces I'm doing I am I out of this tape right here out of the tape. Okay. So, good thing I have an extra here. Okay. Now, I should probably stamp these first. I think that would make uh, the impressions a little bit more flush, but uh, what I mean by that is I'm going to, you know, glue this bottom portion down and these two um the photo and the uh the silver foil probably aren't the same height so when i stamp my image over the top of it it might leave a little bit of a gap in between you know you know where that joint is right there but i don't know, just for simplicity's sake i'm just going to uh i don't know, i'm just going to glue this down right now Okay, so, you know, because if you stamp these separately, you know, you'll get a nice flush um, print going all the way up to the edge. If I don't get that, I'll just fill in with a little bit of a pen or something like that. I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get there. The thing about this piece, too, is that it doesn't have to be perfect, you know. So I'm leaving a little bit of a gap in there, too, so this can, you know, open and close freely. Okay, so let's get that little bit of an extra area up top there, okay? And what I'll do is I'll just put a little bit of hole through that there and there so I can see where that is, okay? I'll fold this over, and what I'll do is I will... Because, you know, you don't want to just cut off this side, then it's not going to match up with this down here. I guess it doesn't have to. You know, you can make one flap a little bit um, longer. I don't know, it would kind of look weird, though, maybe, in some respects. So why don't we just cut this portion off like that? This is a really quick card, so... I, we'll see, unless I run into uh, some issues here and I have to do some repair work, okay? So anyways, you see what that has right there. See that? Those clouds will be reflecting right down in my water like that. Isn't that really cool? All right. Um, let's go with the brilliance ink right here. Now, if I'm stamping on photographs, I can just use any kind of ink. Dye-based inks work just fine. Water-based dye, you know, just plain... Um, dye-based inks, remarkably. You wouldn't think it would, but it, I don't know. It's it's always kind of shocked me that it's it works fine. Um, but it does. So brilliance, fast-drying pigment ink, 
shouldn't have any problem. Now, I don't know about like a VersaFine Claire or something like that, an oil based on that photo paper, okay? By the way, you can download and print my photographs of clouds and photo stamping uh, photographs for free on my Flickr account. Uh, I have a few. I, I need to put some um, more dramatic ones. I, I keep it kind of... They're not too exciting because usually I'm stamping directly on there and I like to have the ability to go in and add extra colors. So I've decreased the saturation and um, contrast of all these photos. But for something like this, it wouldn't be bad to have, you know, a real strong um, differentiation between cloud and sky. So I've really decreased the contrast so that we can stamp, you know, any way we want on there um, for my usual... Um, photo stamping uh, needs. Okay, so I'm just going, I'm roughly at it, lining this up on the, roughly around the horizon. There, there's like a quarter inch in here, so it's not like, you, oh my god, I was off, you know, a 32nd of an inch or a 16th of an inch or something like that um, with something like this. Okay, now I'm, you always want to get plenty of pressure. Okay. Um, if you're stamping with stamping platform, you always hit it a couple different times, but go left, right, center, you know, top and bottom. Don't rock your stamp, though. Okay. Now, I'm just applying extra pressure because I'm a little worried about that seam in there again. I don't want, like, a big quarter-inch seam or something like that where it didn't stamp. But if I get a little bit, it's not going to be a problem. Okay, that's not a problem at all. It looks, like, fine. I have a little bit of a purple showing in there. I guess it's better than white, though. It's dark. Now, I just went with the purple just because I happen to have um, a purple pre-folded card. I mean, it wouldn't be hard to just take a piece of card and, you know, fold it. But believe it or not, I'm somewhat lazy when it comes to that. And if I, <laughs> there's an easier way to do something, I do it. People think that I'm, uh, you know, super, I don't know. Uh, people think I do, like, really complex processes and stuff like that that are hard. I, I'm not into hard, believe me, okay? I want certain types of results, yeah. But I'm into simple processes that yield dramatic results. And people say, oh my god, you make it look so easy. You know, I tried it and it didn't work. Well, I say, well, you know, or they tried something and it didn't work. And then I say, well, what did you do? And they say, well, I stamped on foil and it never dried. And I said, well, what did you use on it? And they'll say something like, well, I just used, you know, my whatever inks from, dye-based inks from a certain company. And it's like, you got to use the inks that'll dry on foils, like, you know, like a you know, a solvent stays on, or a brilliant sink, or something like that, and that makes it easy, because that works on that, okay? All right, so there we have it. That seemed, and, you know, posed too much of a problem there. And there we have, look at that lake, like that. See that? Isn't that awesome? In terms of that reflection like that? I mean, that is really cool. I always want to create that kind of mirrored look, in my pieces, but um, I hadn't thought about using the mirror before, you know. And we have the mirror, you know, uh, capabilities with this um, silver foil. Okay, now the silver foil here is, I mention it, I'm not a spokesperson for the brand or anything like that. I bought the cheapest stuff that I could find, you know, I was looking for a metallic cardstock, and then the foils came up. And I thought, huh, you know, it's... I was looking for more for the iridescent stuff, but um, there was this foil that I found somehow. I say somehow because... And then when I looked for it again, I couldn't find it, you know, so I had to really dig deep and figure it out. But, um, yeah, it's like a 50-pack for, six, you know, about 16 or $17 on Amazon. And I was saying to some people that I've seen some packs where the, the foil is like, you know, 
five dollars for five sheets or something. I'm not going to do that, you know. So I'm e I'm into economy of movement and price <laughs> and you know you know these are like my tools you know cotton balls and paper towels and things like that I'm not into uh, you know terribly intricate processes now if I need to use an intricate process to get the results I'm going for then yeah, sure you know no problem but not you know I'm not, I don't go I don't, you know seeking those types of uh, those types of things okay so adding these down I'm adding the foreground down I mean this cards all just about done here are we 11 minutes right here okay so anyways there's my foreground right there and what does this look like okay let's take a look here right here all right look at that Look how three-dimensional that is. Well, like, it is three-dimensional, but look at that. I mean, that is really spectacular as far as a kind of a finished piece goes. Now, I'm tempted to add some foreground up here, like an overhanging tree branch. But if I do that, though, in a piece like this, okay, see if I go like that, you know, the overhanging tree branch is going to show up right in here now, okay? So it takes us off the hook. You don't have to do it, okay? But, okay, that is that. But I'm thinking about adding... Um, just a word stamp down here, okay? And I'll do it in white. It's heaven um, is under our feet as well as over our heads. I have to read in reverse here. That's a quote by Thoreau. And I don't know, I just, I thought it would be interesting in this piece right here. And I'll do it in white. Now here's the thing that I, I kind of forgot to do. It occurred to me briefly when I was doing this, but I think I could have added a little bit of white down here in these rocks before I stamped out the, um, the lakeside cove over it. Okay, so those rocks wouldn't be mirrored. They would be kind of light and not reflective, okay? So that would kind of fine-tune the piece. I, I mean, I think they look okay there, but see that right there, how they're, you know, they're reflecting something that's in, you know, the room, okay? As opposed to just being light. So if we looked at it like the, they wouldn't be dark and reflective, they would just be solid, okay? So that, that's a little refinement that could be done potentially, and I think that would be pretty cool. Okay, so let's see here. I think when we add these little quotes like this down, or little word stamps, I don't know. It, it, to me, it looks more like a complete, oh, I don't know, creative statement in terms of a, you know, a, a card, a finished card, okay? All right, let's see. Oh my gosh, my tack and peel really needs to be um, cleaned off. I can't see it at all. I'm just going to have to go off of, uh, I don't know what I could see, which isn't very much. Okay. Now, <laughs> I mean, if this is totally off registration, um, I can just wipe it off and just do it again. Okay, the brilliant thing doesn't dry so fast. Eh, I kind of blurred it a little bit. But it's not too bad. Okay, so see that right there? But look at that. Okay, so there it is like that. And then you get that. The, uh, the clouds in there, like so. Okay, <laughs> it's it's an interactive piece to say the least. Okay, as far as how it can look. All right, 
And that is it. So what do we have here? We have a 15-minute card. And, you know, I haven't been rushing or anything like that, dilly-dallying about, you know. Um, I think that is a pretty decent time frame. And I, I think, you know, something on the front of the card would be nice. Maybe another quote. Okay, now that is, the Brilliant Sink is completely dry in there. You could um, spray seal this, okay? Now, here's the thing. Here's the one thing I, that I thought about um, when spray sealing. Um, if you do spray seal this, what you'd be doing is you're, you're trying to spray seal your imagery, okay? Your black and uh, it, anything on the foil, okay? You don't really need to spray seal the, uh, the photo up here, okay? But um, what you might want to do is you might want to just, in order to keep this area very reflective and very mirror-like, what you do is you just, when you spray, you'll just, you know, go like that. Okay, I mean, you're covering up a few of the brand, you know, the, the pine trees or something like that, but you spray seal like this so that you really keep the interior. Because if you spray seal the, uh, the chrome, you know, the metallic paper, the silver metallic, like that, um... It might not look quite as mirrored. It looks more like brushed aluminum or something like that and less mirror-like. And that's, you know, the mirrored aspect is, you know, totally what we're going after um, in a card like this, okay? All right, so anyways, hope you enjoyed the piece. And I, <laughs> I hope you give this a try sometime, too. And see, here's the thing. When they open it up like that, okay, I mean, they might open up real fast like that, but when you go like this, those clouds, they're moving like that, you know, in your piece. And it, you know, these pieces right here, the, the trees and everything are fixed. So it just makes for that kind of really dynamic surface like that. See, and how these trees right here are moving more than, you know, that background Print. It's just like, I don't know, it's very three-dimensional like that. It's, I forget what they call that, parallax or something like that. But look at that, like that down there. And look at, the, see in that surface um, quote right there, it looks pretty cool. It's just right on the surface like that. It looks like it's floating, right? And it looks like it's hovering. So, I don't know, it's just really fun stuff. And uh, like I said, that paper like that really makes it uh, possible. And it's very inexpensive. I mean, for cards like this, a 50-pack, that's, I don't know, it's 200 cards if you want, you know. You're not going to be using it for, you know, mirror cards for every time, but um, I don't know. It's, it's just really fun stuff and uh, to play around with. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, hope you like, share, and subscribe.